Well, hello again. Well, guys, we are actually getting like right to the end of this book now. And I don't know about you, um, as a reader, and I've been a reader my whole life, I'm always glad to get to the last chapter to actually find out what's happened. But then there's a certain part, it's like it fills me with a little bit of sadness. Because I think, oh my gosh, I've come to the end of this journey. But the way to look at it is another new book, another new story, another new adventure. So there we go. Chapter 82. I turn away from the tin tub. I don't even want to see whether it works this time or even what happens. I turn away and crouch down with my head on my knees. And before I cover my eyes, I see that walking towards me is the skinny policeman, his radio crackling. Behind him, getting out of the squad car, is the policewoman. All right, son, don't move. Just stay there, son. Just stay there. He's talking in a very calm voice. And he is holding his hands out, palms up. He is really close now. And as I contemplate the fairly failure sorry, of my mission, and it's such a late stage, I've just got nothing left. My shoulders slump and my head droops, and I'm suddenly more exhausted than I had ever thought possible. And I just kind of fall forward. Chapter 83. There was this game that I used to play with Grandpa Byron. Well, I say used to, but it was probably only once or twice. He called it Kim's Game. Although who Kim was, I've got absolutely no idea. Perhaps a friend of his. Anyway, what he'd do was put a few random objects on a tray, like a spoon, a tea bag, a peppercorn, a pen, a ring, anything that was lying around. I'd then have a minute to look at them. And after that, I had to look away while he removed two or three of those objects and I had to tell him which objects were missing. Obviously, Grandpa Byron was brilliant at it. He could do it even if you didn't remove any objects, but just swap the positions of a couple of them. And the reason I'm telling you this now is that Kim's game comes to mind. When, after a minute or so of cough, uh, not coughing, sorry, crouching and not looking up, I lift my head and the policeman is not there. Has he driven off? The police car isn't there either. I didn't hear it drive away. I look around for signs that anything has changed. The first thing I notice is that the garden tub has gone. And along with it, its contents. All that's left are a smouldering black box and the locked tub with its screen black and burnt. The cables have been severed or melted at the point that they entered the tub and that is the sorry end of my dad's time machine. So something has happened. I'm just not sure whether to be pleased or not. If anything, it just makes me more nervous than I was before. But like a bad player of Kim's game, me, I hadn't really paid much attention to my surroundings or, in the first place, it's hard for me to tell what, if anything, has changed. Slowly, I walk over the road to number 40, our old house. There is a car in the driveway, which I don't recognise. It's not Graham and or Bella Skoda. The front door is dark blue like it was when I lived there before but so what? 
what colour had it been when Graham and Bella lived there? I can't remember. Now my heart is beating so fast, or hard, or loud, or all three. I just can't tell, because I know for sure that in the next few moments, I will have the answer to whether my experiment has worked. I push the doorbell. Who will answer? Graham? Bella? Somebody else? And the door opens. But before I can see who it is, she turns away and stalks briskly back down the hallway. For heaven's sake, Al, how many times? Take your key. I know the voice and my heart feels like it's racing and my throat is still dry. So I can just about croak, Mum, Mum. She stops. She turns. It's Mum in our old house, not Steve's house. Well, what are you... Uh, oh, Al, stand. What on earth are you wearing? Oi, hey. I have rushed into the house and throw my arms around her with such a force that we almost overbalance, but we don't. Instead, I just stand there squeezing her and kind of making sure that it's really her. And all the while she's saying, Are you okay, Al? Al, Al, are you okay? Is something wrong? Because I'm sort of half sobbing, half laughing. In hindsight, that must have been pretty weird for her. So we're like that in the hallway and by now Mum is hugging me back. She tells me later, for a mum, a hug for your son is always welcome. And while I'm, la um, while I'm hugging her, I'm checking out every inch of her. Her head, her hair, her hands. And I'm just grinning because everything is exactly how it should be. Then she kisses the top of my head. All right, Wonder Boy, let me go. From the front room is the sound of the television and another familiar voice. Lithuania, Oliver Cromwell, sodium chloride and then a chuckle. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. And then Grandpa Byron in the hallway too and everything looks right. Well, looks right as it can be. I hug him too and he smells right and his right arm is twisted and even that seems right. Everything is right. Mum says, supper in ten minutes, boys. What's for supper? I ask a little bit warily, because probably for the first time in my life, I want it to be one of Mum's experiments. Chicken korma, says Mum, and I get the beginnings of an uneasy feeling. Only there was no chicken in the freezer, so I've done it with a pig's kidney. It'll be a bit of an experiment, and oh, ow. Where did you get those clothes? You've been down the Sea Rider. Behind her back, Grandpa Byron wobbles his head in his own amusement. Everything is right. Everything. Apart from the one thing I need to know. It's the one thing I cannot bring myself to ask. I try telling myself that just saying like this forever. Sorry. Just staying like this forever would be good enough for me. And if I don't ask, then I won't get the answer that I'm dreading. But it isn't. I have to ask. Where's Dad? Mum looks at me like I'm crazy. And I can hardly breathe. Your dad? She says, frowning. Where do you think? Oh my gosh, I can't wait for the next chapter guys, I really can't, but we're not going to read it now. So, 
I hope you enjoyed that. Two more chapters to go. See you soon, guys. Take care. Bye. Bye.